I'm with Itzak Savati from Stand With Us UK. Now, Itzak, what is Stand With Us UK? Stand With Us UK is an international group with offices around the world established 22 years ago. The idea was to create a platform that will educate and work on campuses and bring the truth about Israel. It was very close to the second Intifada and the rise of social media. And the founders realized that uh, we need to create a combative tool that will present mainly the youth, the truth and the history about Israel, and to help them, first of all, to build their Israeli Jewish Zionist identity, but also to uh, share those messages with their friends. And sometimes people who are trying to challenge those like perceptions that for us are, are something that we uh, we all believe in. So what is the mood like at the moment on the campuses? The million dollar question. So uh, I think that, that we can identify two major changes on campus life here in the UK. The first one came right after Operation Guardian of the World in 2021, when we saw a major shift in the atmosphere, in violence, in the way that the pro-Palestinian protesters are trying to challenge pro-Israeli Jewish students on campus. And the second was uh, right after October 7th. Uh, you know, I personally and my staff, we thought that they will take some, that it will take some time before they will go out to the streets and to um, and protest on campuses. And we were very surprised to see that like hours after the massacre, they didn't even think to try to distance themselves from what happened. They had supportive rallies on what happened. They didn't even treat it as something wrong. They thought that this is part of like normal resistance. And when I'm talking about campuses, I'm not talking about marginal campuses. I'm talking about the main campuses. And maybe the, the latest is what happened to our students less than 24 hours ago in Leeds University. They put a table with some uh, leaflets and, and educational content about Israel, put the Israeli flag and invited people to discuss and short moment after a few students came and just flipped the table, took everything that the students has, assaulted them and went away. So that, that's the reality that we are facing right now. So is it very dangerous to actually be Jewish in university at the moment? I would say that it might be dangerous if you will do two things. You will reveal yourself and you will, you will identify with Israel. So if you, um, you know, if you will keep your identity in secret, you won't project anything that implying that you're Jewish. And if you won't project your support in Israel, then you might be safe. But if you will, if you will do it, you, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's dangerous. Yes. Are, are the leaders on the campuses actually dealing with this, these type of attacks and threats? So the universities are a very complicated arena. First of all, the, the, the university leadership, in my view, they can do a lot more. They realize that those anti-Israeli groups are, are very extreme. They don't want to deal with them. I think that at the beginning, they thought that if they will contain their messages, the situation might come down. But I think that the opposite happened. As long as you feed the beast, they become hungrier. And today, I think that they completely lost control on what's going on on that matter. The student leadership, so again, they also understand that they have a lot to lose. If they will try to challenge those extreme groups, you have to understand that they are they have a lot of people behind them i don't want to say that the jews are the minority but you know if you will go to like a normal campus and you will see a rally we're talking about a massive amount of people and they are part of societies and other campus bodies and sometimes when you have a society that i don't know like a music society they will think twice before they will collaborate with the israeli society or with the jewish society because they might find themselves boycotted by all the other societies that are afraid from messing up around or, or deal with the pro-Palestinian society. So that's on, on the student level. There is also student unions that more and more student union bodies are led by pro-Palestinian students that using the student union as a platform, as a political platform to deliver their pro-Palestinian messages, but mainly anti-Zionist messages. I can give you examples that even some of them using their official email signature in a body that should represent all students, regardless their views or origin or nationality, 
They're using those emo signatures to put pro-Palestinian slogans, anti-Zionist slogans, etc., etc. So right now you have some, what I defined as heroes, local heroes, students that are taking the initiative and try to change reality. But this is, it's a drop in the ocean. These extremists, do they actually have any facts that they can base things on? Or is it just like a herd mentality where everyone's just beginning to follow them because they're the powerful view? I don't think that facts is something that they care about. I think that they have a narrative and they're following their narrative. And it, it is very hard to challenge their narrative with facts. Because for them, if you will try to engage with them and discuss with them about facts and history, they'll, they will immediately cut you off and say, look, I, I'm not going even to discuss with you. You're dangerous. Some other compliments that they, you, you, you probably get. So it, it's very rare to find people who are actually willing to argue or to, to discuss on, on a fact base. Usually, you know, they're coming with a narrative and, and, and that's what it is. And yes, look, I, I can give you another example. We brought a speaker to UCL University a year ago. And I don't know if our listeners are familiar with UCL University. It's a campus in central London, in like close to Tottenham Court Road. It's really the heart of London. And uh, we just brought a speaker to speak in front of like 50 students. Those pro-Palestinian groups heard about it and they organized 300 protesters with smoke grenades, flags, obviously covering their face with, faces with kafiyas, chanting and basically blocked the entrance to the building so we won't be able to even bring a speaker to, to speak with the students. We forced to hire security guards to come through an old parking lot just to enter the building. It was an all issue. And that's just to, you know, to, to ensure something that it's so fundamental and basic on campus life, which is a freedom of speech and freedom of ideas. So that's how it looks like these days. And what sort of projects do you run to help Jewish people stand up for what they believe? Yeah, so first of all, we support students on campus, whether individually or uh, as part of a society. We have a lot of Israeli societies, Jewish societies. So we are supporting them with educational content, with organizing events, with money, obviously. Sometimes they're being blocked under like bureaucracy grounds uh, so we are helping them advising them working or, and, and supporting them in their or with the university in order to get their rights or what they need to get uh, we're also collaborating with other organizations in the uk like uk lawyers for israel that helps us a lot uh, when it comes to uh, demand students right and to ensure that they're getting what they should get in addition to that we have the emerson fellowship which is actually, it's an international fellowship. Stand With Us has this fellowship in other areas around the globe. Our students just came back from Los Angeles from a huge conference with hundreds of students from our Emerson Fellowship around the world. We are trying to identify the leaders, the potential leaders on campus. We are creating a very quality cohort of students and we are teaching them not only the facts and the history, but we also give them public diplomacy skills, public speaking sp skills, they are meeting with ambassadors, journalists, so we're, we're tr really trying to open them to the world. We also work with schools. We have workshops for like more younger ages. We have a very strong young professional group. We call it the Blue and White Club. They're very active and the numbers increased dramatically. After October 7th, a lot more people joined us on that initiative. And we obviously address the community as a whole, adults and more senior leadership, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, the bottom line is that Stand With Us is a one-stop shop for education and advocacy for Israel. And we are, we are offering content and programs to all age groups. Has the anti-Semitism in the UK surprised you? Look, as you can tell from my accent, I'm, I'm not originally from the UK. I'm an Israeli. I've been living here for like two and a half years, but... I think that those two and a half years were pivotal years. I came here right after Operation Guardian of the Walls, and I saw the escalation. So mm. when I saw that Jewish schools were closed two weeks after October 7th, under concerns that there might be security issues, and when I saw that some of the members of the Jewish community took off their mezuzah from the doors, I was not surprised at all because it, it was a wave, it was a tsunami. We saw it coming. 
And I think that October 7th was just helped it erupt. So to your question, no, I'm not surprised at all. And I'm not that optimistic about the future. I think that without strong involvement of the government, of the police and the society as a whole, the situation will get much worse. Have you personally witnessed anti-Semitism? Personally, myself, no. But, you know, it's all around. I can tell you that on the personal level, me and my staff, we had to be under heavy security. Still are when it comes to what we do. And I cannot say more, but so, you know, we, we are taking the right precautions in order to avoid those kind of incidents. But it doesn't feel well when you need to uh, go with security just to do something that we perceive as like normal work. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've seen from the river to the sea projected on Big Ben and Laila Khalid, a hijacker, was hosted on video by a pro-Palestinian group. So do you think that the UK is becoming more and more anti-Israel? I think that those steps are helping maybe the British public to understand what they're facing, because every week it escalates more and more and more. And what you saw on Big Ben, it's just the tip of the iceberg. You see Fatah flags all over London. They're hanging those flags on the streets as if it's like the national flag of the UK. They are putting those flags and other slogans on memorial sites to British soldiers. And I think that on a contrary, I think that those kind of actions may be functioning as a wake up call to the British people that what we see on the streets against Israel, it's much wider than that. It develops as, as a war between two civilizations. And Israel, on that regard, or the war in Gaza, is just an excuse to push those, to push this agenda all over the UK. So I hope that uh, we won't get to, we won't see more escalation and people around the UK will understand that protests against Israel and thousands and tens of thousands of people who supporting a massacre in innocent people, this is not something that any free society can allow itself, whether it's against Israel or against any other country. Now you are stand with us. Are you seeing people stand with Israel? And are you also seeing the Christian community standing with Israel at this time? Oh, 100%. Uh, we have fantastic collaboration with the Christian community here in the UK. They are reaching out to us. We are helping them with materials, with speakers. We are sometimes having joint events. And, you know, it's it's heartwarming to see the support that we are getting. And sometimes you, you, even, you might even think that you don't do enough when you look at the way they're pushing us to do more, which is fantastic and great. And the public in general, yeah. You know, we just, we had a very nice initiative the first months of the war. We created Magen David badges and we didn't put our logo on them. We just wrote, I stand with Israel. And a few weeks later, I just, I was with my family up north and I saw people walking on the streets with those badges. And, and I knew, I, I knew for sure that they are not Jewish people. They're not Jewish. And you see that those messages, you know, people, people understand that there is right and wrong here. Obviously, it's not an easy thing to be on the side of Israel and on the side of, you know, Western values and what we believe in democracy, as much as it sounds odd these days. Yeah, it's, it's a challenging thing, but people, I think more and more people understand who is the right, what is the right side and, and who, are, who are in the wrong side here. And, and yeah, I, I hope that this trend will, will continue. Now, you were actually in Navy Special Forces. Do you think Israel can defeat Hamas? And should Hezbollah be on the list too to actually deal with them at this moment? For sure, I think that Israel can deal with Hamas. Obviously, the situation now is much more sensitive because we have hostages. You realize that if we, we, uh, if we didn't have hostages in captivity, I think that the situation was completely different. So Israel is trying to, from one hand, dealing with Hamas, and at the same time to ensure that all of the hostages will get back safely. So it's, it's much more complicated. But obviously, if you're analyzing that from a military point of view, Israel can defeat Hamas, Israel will defeat Hamas. It's a matter of time, but it will happen. But it, it's a very sensitive and delicate situation. As for the North, it's hard to, to see a scenario in which the tens of thousands who, of, of Israelis who've been evacuated from the, the homes and towns in the northern border of Israel will return while Hezbollah still holds its stockpile and terrorists on the border with Israel. So I think that at some point Israel will have to deal with that. 
how and when, we don't know, but I have a strong feeling that we will see a military conflict there in the near future. What is your prayer finally for Israel at this time? My prayer for Israel? It's, it's a very emotional question, and thank you for asking that. I think that I'm, I'm wishing Israel to be united, and you know, when we are working together, when we are united, nobody can defeat us. So now we are experiencing tough times, and we experienced tough times in the past. All of our history is full with challenging times, and we prevailed. And this is another challenge of our generation. And if we will stick together, and we will believe in our cause, we will win again. What's your website for people who'd like to know more? Our website is standwithusukinoneword.com. Okay, Itzhak, thank you very much for sharing today. Thank you very much for having me.